Hello Internet, it's Juha here. I have always wanted to do a review of the tool, which I respect very highly. It's a must-have tool for the BMW owner who does the do-it-yourself maintenance. Moreover, it's a vital tool when traveling long distances and sometimes tight schedule. I'm talking about the GS911. It's a diagnostic tool for BMW motorcycles. It's a highly specialized tool that can read motorcycle electronics and show details of it. And it can clear fault codes and even display real-time values of different parameters. It's made by a South African company called Hexcode. They made the first version of the GS911 in 2007. And since then they have made numerous improvements to it. There are several versions of the device and they have also made other devices for motorcycling. So, in this video I will show what the device is, how to connect it to the motorcycle and how to read and change the motorcycle parameters. And then I even show you how to use it on the trip. Let's go! First, let me say that this video is not sponsored by Hexcode or any other company. I bought this tool with my own money. So, here is the tool or device and its case. But before we rush uh, into the device details themselves, there are a few issues to know when purchasing it. Hexcode manufactures uh, a few versions of this tool. There are a version for personal use and then professional use. Basically the difference is how many different bikes you can work with because it's VIN code locked. This locking is for the service and maintenance functionality only. And the limit is 10 bikes. But there's no limitation to the diagnostics functionality. Another difference is that you can buy this device with or without a Wi-Fi connection. This means that if you travel with this device, you need a Wi-Fi version if you don't take a laptop with you. If you use this device only in your garage, the cheaper USB version might be sufficient. There is an excellent table of information on the Hexcode internet pages. This is an expensive unit, but you might find it as a second-hand product. Or you can share the costs between other BMW owners who are willing to see diagnostics information of their bike. This is the unit itself. Not so big at all. It comes in a hard box and you can take it easily with you when traveling. The unit has an interface for connect connecting it to the bike. There are currently two types of connection. Older round one, a 10 pin connector and the new rectangular OPD2 standard connector. I have the requirement to connect the boat connector and that's why I have this adapter cable. Hexcode also sells these adapter cables. This is the USB cable to connect the device directly to the computer. At the other end of the device are the USB connector, three status LEDs and a connection method selection button. This unit is surrounded by a rubber harness mainly because it's intended to use in the field. The look and feel are very professional. There's also a guide in the box to connect the device to your bike and computer. It's handy if you don't remember all the details about USB or Wi-Fi connections. There are other ECU readers for a cheaper cost and you can find exact replicas of this unit. But what differentiates this from others is the integration of the software and, of course, the versatile functionality of the whole package. And also there is a full support to answer questions and possible warranty issues. Let's connect this to my bike and see how the software works. Okay, before connecting this uh, GS911 to my bike, I need to take the seat away. I 
I have to be careful because there is this uh, seat heating uh, uh, wiring connector and uh, I have to take it away. And now here is this OPD connector and uh, you can see the connecting pins there. Now I just uh, connect this uh, GS911 to this connector push it firmly and uh, it starts to blink this LED light which says that uh, there's electrical connection between this GS911 and the bike. And then there's uh, another uh, LED which says that this uh, mode is device to device. Then I just need to connect a USB connection to the other end of the GS911. I uh, choose this uh, GS911 software here, which I have installed in uh, Windows 10 Parallels MacBook Pro setup. Okay, now the uh, connection is created between bike and uh, this GS911 uh, software. And uh, it's very clearly visible here, lower right corner, where you can see some uh, information about the uh, battery status. And uh, then there is this blinking LED, which means that uh, the software is connected to the bike. From the top, there are few selections, uh, pull down menus, where you can uh, select setup options, uh, firmware updates, and uh, other stuff. So first you can uh, perform auto scan. It uh, will find all the electrical components uh, from the CAN bus from your bike and uh, display the information and uh, we'll do that right now. I just uh, click this perform auto scan button. And then software informs you that uh, please switch on the ignition from the bike. And now it starts to uh, auto scan all components and computers uh, from the bike. In this section is the, uh, is the general motorcycle information about the bike, bike and uh, its model and model year and mileage information is visible here and uh, other important information. Uh, from here you can see the list of these uh, extras, additional components of the bike. Then there's uh, controllers of the bike and uh, there's very detailed information about the controllers, uh, firmware, electronics, bootloader and uh, other information. And uh, here you can see first important information which comes uh, via auto scan or scanning the uh, bike. It uh, software informs that there's no fault codes found in this component. And this information is available in each and every subcomponent here. And uh, when I'm scrolling down I, I am seeing this engine controller next, uh, manufacturer and uh, manufacturer date and uh, other important stuff. And uh, there I already see first fault code. There's this code itself, 3A1822 and uh, plain text which says that uh, reverse assist servo motor mechanical fault or blockage. This fault is not present now. Some of these uh, fault codes comes and goes and uh, they are not so serious fault codes. Uh, for example, there's no fault light on dashboard on my bike, so 
Uh, without this uh, GS911, I wouldn't uh, notice this information at all. Uh, this information is visible only via this uh, CAN bus uh, scanning devices. It seems that this uh, fault code is not so so really important. So when I am clearing all fault codes, I'm uh, going to do again auto scan or scanning these components and uh, then I see if this uh, fault will come back and uh, if it's uh, constantly there of course uh, I need to do something with this if I can so let's continue to other components here uh, in this component there's no fault code then this uh, controller for the active headlight same uh, information and no fault codes found. ABS brake controller, very important controller and there you can see the variant which is this uh, K48 Hill Start ABS Pro. And there's no fault codes found. Uh, suspension uh, controller there's no fault codes. Keyless entry. No fault codes. Uh, alarming functionality. And there's one fault code. Uh, 8029. Alarm activation. Default is not present now. And this comes very uh, often when uh, you accidentally uh, press the key and uh, this alarm is uh, switched on so this fault code is uh, not uh, important fault code in such a way that there's some fault in this uh, module but uh, it just informs that it's working as intended then instrument cluster no fault codes audio controller I never use this radio but there's two fault codes here amplifier output to left speaker open circuit and uh, same goes to the right speaker and uh, I believe that these two fault codes comes because I took away the speakers uh, when I was doing this uh, headlight uh, LED conversion Then there's body controller, there's uh, three fault codes, high beam headlight open circuit and left uh, and right turn signal indicator. I believe that uh, these are from the same source than the previous one. So when I'm done with this list, I always save uh, this as a file so I can come back uh, later if it's uh, needed. And after saving, I clear all fault codes. It's very straightforward operation. And uh, software informs that all fault codes cleared. So there's no uh, fault codes anymore. And uh, after uh, riding the bike a uh, few times, I will check again this auto scan. From the main screen, Select the BMW series followed by a specific model within the series you selected. One should know that functions are dependent on the model and the type of control unit. For instance, the F series will not have the same real time values as the K series, and the service and maintenance functions will differ too, as these have very different control units. Once you have selected the K1600 GTL, the software will present you with a list of its possible control units. On the same navigation pane that all of the possible control units are listed, you might find an entry termed special functions. These are generally service and maintenance functions that either do not belong to a single control unit or want easier accessibility rather than navigating through all the control units. 
These special functions are highly dependent on the model, series and type of control unit. You should note that the date of the motorcycle should be correct. The software compares the motorcycle date to that of the PC and if they differ, there's a warning. The date of the motorcycle can be set under the special function section too. Resetting the service reminders is a one button click procedure. Clicking this button will set the next service values to 365 days on and 10,000 km or 6,000 miles if miles are selected as units for distance in the option sections from the current odometer value. The service reminder will automatically be cancelled after the ignition is cycled if the new distance to next service is more than 1000 km from the current odometer reading and the date of the next service is more than one month in the future. The service reminders have two var variables. One is the date of the next service and the other is the target odometer value. The service reminders will be activated for whichever of these two is reached first. I will not go through all the menu items, but instead show a couple of samples. Most control units follow similar structures. These generally are ECU information, read and clear fault codes, real-time values, and control unit specific service and maintenance functions including the adaptation research, calibrations, output tests and model specific functions. The ECU info, read clear fault codes and real-time values are seen as a general functions and are also referred to as the emergency functions. Independent of whether you have the professional or enthusiast version of the PC software, you can use these emergency functions on all unlimited number of motorcycles. Only the service and maintenance functions are limited to 10 motorcycles when using the enthusiast version and unlimited for the professional version. Clear fault codes. This function is used to clear fault codes. You should note that fault codes are again read after the command to clear them was successfully issued. This then shows any fault codes that software could not clear. If any codes are shown, this means that the control unit detected that the specific fault was still present in the system, fault was not rectified, and the control unit could not clear the fault. There are no codes that cannot be cleared. However, some have to be fixed before they can be successfully cleared. Real-time values. This function shows the live data for the control unit. Once again, this depends a lot on the type of controller and the model and series of the motorcycle. First in the list are input signals and output signals, and then digital outputs and switch positions. At the top of the real-time data panel are three buttons, logging to CSV, plotting O2 lambda, and plot values. The first one will allow you to lock a .csv file of all of the real-time values so that you can manipulate, graph and study this information. With the service functions you can do output tests. This section allows you to activate various parts that the ECU controls, like the injectors, fuel pump, idle actuators, exhaust valves, etc. Adaptations and calibrations. The section calibrates, resets or views the adapted values for various parts or sensors. When replacing certain parts or sensors, the previously learned adapted values need to be cleared and in some cases relearned, such as gear position sensor. The software guides you through this simple procedure. With this selection, I can set the engine warning light on and off on a dashboard. So, I have connected uh, my smartphone, this iPhone to GS911 Wi-Fi network already, and then I'm, I can launch app here. 
and I can see from this uh, display that uh, it's connected to network which starts with GS911. I can hit this uh, selection here and I can see this browser window where I can see already from the top right corner that the, the software is uh, connected to GS911. It's green, this uh, green light here and also battery status is visible. So I can select auto scan here and uh, it starts to perform exactly same auto scan uh, and I can see all the information here. It's a little bit different format but I can see fault codes and uh, other in important information for problem solving. I can come back to uh, main menu and uh, I can select this uh, detected vehicle and uh, I can see all these controllers, individual controllers here and I can select uh, pretty much same than the Windows software for example this engine controller and uh, I can read again controller information and uh, read and clear fault codes and again I can see real-time values here so I can toggle on or off these values and uh, then I can select display values and I can see here all the real-time values for from my bike. I can come back to main menu and uh, look other components for example uh, instrument cluster and uh, Again, I can select all values here, which I want to look, and then select display values, and I can see all information from uh, this portion. Uh, in this menu, there are other selection also. For example, set up, I can set Wi-Fi for this GS911, some options and uh, look for example this VIN usage information so I can see that uh, there's only VIN number recorded which is my bike and nine VIN numbers available so this was uh, this field operation uh, with uh, smartphone and uh, GS911 if you are traveling somewhere and uh, you have some emergency situation some uh, problem with your bike's uh, electronics and you want to look the information from the smartphone okay that was all about gs911 if you like this video please give big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon if you want to have uh, notifications from new videos. See you in the next video and uh, ride safe!